Hello class and welcome to our second lecture series on microeconomics and I'm your instructor Jamal Haider or Dr. Jamal you can call me. Okay we talked about that we are going to you know refer to our book Principles of Economics by Case et al and Principles of Economics by Monty. Okay so Time to time, we will, I will be referring you the reading material. I will be uploading both on Blackboard and your WhatsApp group. Okay. If you wouldn't download from the uh, WeChat group and it is expired, so please go to your Blackboard and download over there. Okay. There we go. So today we will be talking about a new chapter called the market forces of supply and demand. So today we will be talking about extensively what do we mean by demand. So introduction is, so are you noticing something that if winter hits in Shanghai or in your area, prices of t-shirts and shirts, uh, prices of t-shirts and shorts are decreasing. You see a sales, you know, mega sales on you know, the big stores, the prices of warm clothes, on the other hand, rising. So when weather turns warm in New England, in summer, prices of hotel room rises, or if you belong to a cold country in Canada or somewhere else in Norway, so you see that if summer hits, or when there's the sunshine, the prices of hotel rises. So what have common in these events? There is some market force that causes these prices to decrease or increase or causes this hotel prices to increase or decrease or rent prices to increase or decrease. So we call this the market forces of demand and supply. So supply and demand are the two words that economists use most often. And you already know that, right? The demand for this one is rise. So you already know in your personal capacity as well. So today we will, we will be talking about in detail, what do we mean by demand? what actually you know demand is. So this is very helpful for your own personal business, whether you are starting or whether you are about to start or thinking to start or joining your own family business or whatsoever if you are joining a job as well. So this is very important for you to learn. So supply and demand are the forces that make market economies work whatsoever is going through right now in the world, you can think of in terms of demand and supply and you got the answer, simple. So here, if you want to know how an event affects the economy, first think about how it will affect demand and supply, simple. Flood hit the Pakistan, what's gonna happen? Demand for food items increase or decrease because all the agricultural land and are filled with water so they're gonna be price increase or decrease. We need to think in terms of demand and supply. There is war, what, what will happen to the economy? What will happen to me? What will happen to my needs? What will happen to uh, fee structures? What will happen to the income? What will happen to the housing market? What will happen to you know uh, uh, the, the food prices, the car, automobile industry, the petrol prices, everything is linked. And you can explain it just by having a grip on demand and supply, right? So before starting, we pay close attention here. First, the market forces of demand and supply. First, we define the market. So the term, Supply and demand, it refers to the behavior of people as they interact 
with one other with one another in comparative market so remember we are talking about the demand and forces in competitive market first we talk about the market and then we talk about the competitive market okay what is market a group of buyers and sellers here right of a particular goods and services simple buyers determine demand for the product so who determining demand of the product buyer why because they want to buy a product so they create demand for determine demand sellers they determine supply whether they are ready to to supply to the buyer or not right so market is in which buyers and sellers meet with one another but for a specific goods or product or uh, goods or services right now let's define uh, or okay if you understand all this one so please answer this concept checker that a market is always characterized by think about that please answer that priscilla a b c d so those who are watching online please pause the video here and try to guess the answer priscilla so a high degree of organization okay we have a b an individual or small group of individuals who set the price of product for all buyers and sellers c the presence of buyers and sellers and d no, I'm, I'm oh wait 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 <laughs> I i'm sorry i'm sorry i thought this was... okay 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 <laughs> okay okay so please answer it Let's say D. We said D. So we have a D answer. Nicola. Uh, me, sir. Did you call me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say. Um, I would say C. C. Avarun. Um. D. C. 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 Okay, let's see the answer here. The answer would be C. So why not D? Your question should be, right? So let's talk about this. So market is always characterized by a high degree of organization. What do you mean by high degree of organization? We have, you know, uh, a uh, high degree of organization for example somewhere the market has to be open from 9 to 5 we still see that market are still open at 11 pm 11 pm right or markets are highly organized in the way of uh, you know government control but we still see on in, in our area the prices are not 100% regulated by the government in some areas prices are different some areas prices are same right so always the word key point is always so a cannot be the answer b an individual or small group of individuals small individuals of always there is a small individuals and if we have 100000 people that are watching the football match is there a market for sports or not watching sports there are thousands of people or if you go to china in ebu or in guangzhou or in shenzhen so you see a thousand people you know having uh, you know go through with buying and selling stuff so in small individual group can not be the answer the keyword is always so always is the presence of buyers and sellers so d cannot be the answer priscilla now understand yes good so a market takes many forms a high organized or less organized so your answer here high degree of 
organization. It can be a low degree of organization as well. So what do we mean by highly organized market in which buyers and sellers, they meet at specific time and place where auctioneer helps setting the price. For example, agricultural market, where all the farmers are selling their wheat, the vegetables, in which there is auctioneer and there's a specific time, right? There is a degree of some kind of organization there. Less organized market in which buyers and sellers don't meet at a particular time, like online stuff, Taobao, Alibaba, uh, Alibaba, AliExpress, or Amazon, eBay, right? You can easily um, log on and you can just order it at any time. So there is no particular time, no place, and there is no such auctioneer to call out the price. In which price is decided, if you wanna buy it, buy it. If you don't wanna buy it, just go. Right? So sellers and buyers are closely connected face to face. For example, consider the market of ice cream. So there is no brand here. Ice cream is a journal market, journal ice cream, no branding here. Right? If you don't like, if you don't wanna pay $10 ice cream, just go to the next shop, right? Maybe you, you, you will get $8 right so only ice cream there is no brand here right so some people say that oh we are talking about what about the ice cream for the walls or you know the other like uh Hagen's or maybe different ice creams by starbucks or, or you know so just simple ice cream no branding there and now Competitive market. What is competitive market? A competitive market is that market in which there are many sellers and many buyers. When there are many sellers and many buyers, what happened? And they are selling the same product. So each of the party, they don't have any control over the price. So if there are many buyers and many sellers and selling the same product, same product, no branding, nothing else. If I increase the price that I will sell my ice cream, the same ice cream that others are selling, $10. The customer will come and say, I don't wanna buy. So can I force him to buy? He just go to the next shop. Or if a customer come to me and say, I wanna buy it at $2. What I would say, go to the next shop because there are many buyers. For a buyer, there are many sellers. If I increase the price, he will go to the next seller. If he wanna buy at lower price, I will decline, simple. So nobody controls the price. In competition, market itself through a mechanism of, mechanism of supply and demand, it is determined to determine the price and if you can beat the price, you stay in the market. If you cannot produce the ice cream at the, at the price specified by the market, you will exit the market, simple. So we will be discussing this in